All right, if all goes well, this is a front fairing removal to facilitate installation of the headlight wiring harness. I'm going to start here with side fairing removal. On the side fairing, there's really just uh, four fasteners that hold it in plus one compression. This is a simple screw here, M5 screw. It can be removed by a four millimeter Allen. And then up, un up, up underneath the side fairing, difficult to see in this light, but I'll indicate with my finger, one here, one here, and then back around the side. There's one further here, and that's the push pin. Uh, these are simple plastic push pins, pretty common in automotive use. You can see there, it's kind of a piston that goes into an expanding joint in the bottom of the plastic fitting. So that'll be step one. Once you've removed all of those things, you can just pull off the fairing. Now there is a compression piece back here by my rear finger. You can usually just get in there and give it a little squeeze. It'll come loose. You may need to put the camera down to do it. You can see it just back in there, but that'll suffice for now. I'll show you this piece coming off once I release that. Compression. Now we've released that compression piece so the fairing can just slide back and off. Take note of these hooked fasteners that go in those recesses there. Next step for removing the front fairing, you're going to want to pull the M5 or M6 bolt here that holds the lower air duct on and then you have a total of four fasteners holding the front fairing on. They're all large I think P3 style Phillips head screws. There's one here, another one recessed here, two on the opposite side, same thing on the opposite side for air ducts. And start it whenever you're ready. We're rolling? Okay. So now I've removed all the fasteners for the upper fairing. We're going to go ahead and take it off. Uh, it will hang up on the fork tubes as you're seeing here. You can expand these just slightly so that way they don't get, get them up too badly. Doing it on the opposite side as well. You pull back. Now, normally from the factory, we've already disconnected, but you'll see there's a wiring connector here. It mates up underneath the fairing on the opposite side. So one important thing to note when you're removing these is that there are actually compression fittings on the bottom of the air ducts. You can see one here. There's another one on the opposite side. Those have to be removed before you start tugging on the headlight fairing. You can't just start pulling before you've removed, removed these pins, you could actually conceivably rip out the air ducts. So make sure you release these compression pins before you start tugging on the front fairing. Once the fairing's off and free of the bike, you can take it and put it to a safe workstation. We'll just put it on the carpet here. All right. Ready? All right, so here's our front, fender, uh, front fairing disconnected from the bike. I'm just gonna roll it over now so you can see the wiring harness. This is the headlight wiring harness right here. Uh, I'll try to trace it with my hand just so you can kind of see what's going on. Connection here for the uh, what would be the left headlight over here, right headlight. I'll get a little bit closer to that so you can see it. It's just a lift up style connector. You can probably pry it right here, get it free. There we go, and that's out. Okay, pretty simple. Now note they use zip ties just about everywhere on this harness to keep it located. Uh, there's a couple permanent clips inside of here. I don't have a, enough light to show those to you, but there's one there. There's another zip tie that needs to be clipped here. It's important probably at this point that I note. The headlight wiring harness also comes up in here. These are your pilot lights. One there, one there, and then this is the relay. If you bought the headlight wiring kit, this will actually be included with your new headlight harness and this wiring here I believe is eliminated. Uh, again tracing up this is going to be the left hand side you can see one more zip tie there and then the turn signal removes conventionally it's just an M6 nut. So once you release all that the wiring harness comes free and you replace that with the new harness. Um, if you have any questions feel free to shoot an, an email to steve at af1racing.com but that's pretty much the disassembly of the front fairing in a nutshell. Okay, here's our headlight fairing again, front fairing removed from the bike. Uh, for this, I'm going to just show how to remove the turn signals because this is kind of counterintuitive. With most makes and mo with most most bikes, you'd actually have turn signals that have some kind of a quick connector on the back uh, that allows you to pull them. Because this is actually all part of a wiring harness, the way that you remove the turn signal is to remove the bolt that holds it in, it's this little guy here, 
and take it out and then you'll notice there's a small Phillips head screw here. You'll use this screw to remove that. I'm going to pause here. Okay, so now what I've done is I've removed the screw from the turn signal housing. Here's your turn signal. Uh, you can see it's held on by two spade style connectors, one and two. I've just pulled those. It's too hard to do one-handed. Uh, and now we're ready to slide these out, these wires out of the turn signal housing. And now this part of the wiring will be free. I'm going to do the rest of it, and then I'll show you the, the headlight coming out of the front fairing. All right, so here we are with the front fairing. Uh, you'll notice that I've removed the turn signals from each side, and I've fished out the wiring and just left it in the back here. At this point, you can just pull a little bit on the headlight, and it should come free. There we go. There's our headlight bucket. And now that's free and removed from the bike. Uh, this is probably as good a time as any to note that this is not a fairing that's going on a motorcycle that we are retailing. This is actually a bike that's already been sold to be converted to race. So none of these parts are, are actually going to be publicly consumed uh, except as used parts in our used parts department. So uh, that's basically how you remove the headlight bucket from the front fairing. You'll note at this point you can go ahead and pretty easily just remove the one screw that holds on the windscreen. At this point we have removed our windscreen and now we're ready to pull the air ducts. The air ducts and the draft shield on the bottom side of the front fairing are held in again by the glorious push pins, uh, these little guys. Uh, we started seeing these in 2004. Again, they're pretty common in automotive applications, but we we'll need to rehash that. Uh, the air ducts are actually compression fit at this point. The pins that held them in have now have been removed. I'll try to show you those. There's one here, another one down in there. Same thing on the opposite side. The draft shield is actually really only held in with one push pin. Same as all the others. It's that one there. So I'm just going to set this down now and try to pull this one-handed. I may have to set down the camera to make this happen. Yeah, well, at this point, basically, you just pull on this. It's compression fit. There are three locating tongues, one here, one here, and another one back here, roughly. I'm going to go ahead and pull that and show you those when they're out. So, yeah, the air ducts come off just like this. You just pull out. You can see there our uh, mounting tongues here, here, and then a further one on the air duct itself right there. Once we're down to this point, you can see the front fairing. This is the draft shield here. This camera work has probably made somebody throw up by now. But that's coming out like that. And now that's free. Now you're finally down to a bare front fairing. And this is the part, if you were going to replace with carbon fiber, this is what you would have need, this is the level of disassembly you would have needed to have gone to. Uh, you'll note here you can see these four silver objects are actually M5 clip nuts. One, two, three, and four. Those will be reused. You'll be pulling those and reusing those. And the uh, carbon fiber or other aftermarket or accessory front fairing. Uh, so I'll stop right here and then we'll can um, continue on if necessary. For whatever it's worth, installation is just going to be the reverse of disassembly. So unless I see something really unusual here, this is probably the last time we'll look at this until we have a finished product. All right, this is the carbon fiber upper fairing. It's an earlier, it's a second generation prototype. This still may not be ready to go, but it'll serve as a pretty good template for installation. One thing I want to draw attention to here with the installation of this is, again, push pins. Uh, while our manufacturer did the very best job they could to get these holes about right for installation of these push pins, they're not perfect. You may actually have to take a drill bit that looks like, uh, I don't know, I don't know SAE sizes, but you probably have to take a drill bit by hand and actually go in here and route, ream these out just a little bit to get these pins to go through uh, smoothly. There are several of these in the fairing. There's one, two, three, four, and five, and then there's another couple inside here. These are for locating the air ducts. There's that. So be mindful of that when you install this that you probably will have to manipulate those a little bit. I don't think you'll need to actually take out a power drill to do it. Just a, a drill bit in your hand uh, reaming that out or maybe even a small file would probably be sufficient to get those of the appropriate diameter so that the uh, push pins will fit.